Cave Engine version 0.96 just got released and it's a huge thing. I'm here with Batman to show you everything I did new and I'm really excited. I hope you guys enjoy it a lot as I am. And by the way, tomorrow on Friday, I'm gonna be hosting a game jam and if you want, you can use this game engine. You can use Blender, you can use your custom game engine as well, but it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'm gonna try to make a game using it. So stay tuned for that and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing to figure out if I'm gonna be able to create a game using my own game engine. So let's jump to the devla. And right here in the project manager, I have a bunch of improvements already. I posted this on my Discord server, link in the description by the way, but when you open the game engine for the first time, you do have a message here showing uh, the basics of the game engine and this is uh, a new feature I also have a better create new project uh, menu here that are gonna show you everything you need and if I open a project well the main thing here in this game in this version is the new UI yes the UI was completely redone it looks completely different right now so if you are following this game engine development for a while you're gonna have are you gonna notice a huge difference right here? So I already did a video showing everything that is new in the UI. So I'm gonna leave the, the link for this video in the card here in this video. And I'm not gonna talk a lot about this, but keep in mind, it's completely different. Another thing that is new here is the asset browser. Again, I already did a video on that, but now it's finally way smoother to uh, navigate. Uh, you can select a scene and I'm gonna show you here that the scene is selected, you can have uh, the, the folders on the left here in this uh, hierarchy. That's a hard word to say. And of course, everything that you can expect in an asset browser is right here. Importing a new asset got easier as well. I already did a video on that again, but if you drag and drop something to the UI, you're gonna have a cool pop-up that are gonna let you choose what do you want to import and a lot of other options as well and less disk space and more performance -y. before I jump to the game here and show you everything that I have new it's worth mentioning that the game engine is about three times lighter yes it uses three times less disk space and this is even more if you export the game as a runtime also I double the performance by doing a bunch of rendering optimization and you can expect more on the rendering later on. Python scripting received a bunch of new updates as well so I'm here with a game that I that can control the character using WESND and press Q to swap between two different characters. You can see here a basic movement working of course and this is the editor so this is in-game you can see here this uh, outline, but I can still select an asset. I can uh, adjust the settings here. So for example, let me select my player. This is the player and let me move this player around real quick. Let me just make this player fall and I can change the settings. It is not going to fall if I have this, the player selected by the way, but here we go. And I can change every settings in the game here. Um, while the game is running, which is pretty cool for debugging. You can also notice if I select the player that I have two different new components. So I stop at the simulation here real quick and this player have a character component, which is a physics type component. This is new to the scene. So if I click here to enable the physics debugger, you can see here that I have a radius around my character and it's gonna behave as a character as you can expect but I also have a player component here that are gonna provide you all the basics W E S and D movements the jump the walk speed the run speed and you can adjust all sorts of things just to get started with your game as fast as possible with no need to code the basic player movements and again I'm gonna introduce more gameplay features and gameplay components by default in the game engine soon so expect more on that later on it's also worth mentioning that i also added a rigid body constraint component so if you want to do a chain or connect two rigid body objects together now you can using the game engine and again when it comes to python scripting here i have my player and i also have the armature which does have a python script here attached to it and i can double click here in the editor asset browser to edit my script and you can see here that I renamed the Python module to cave because well cave is the new name of the game engine of course and you can see here that you can write your code as you want using Python so I have a bunch of cool uh, different Python scripts here to control all sorts of things such as the character swap that I just showed you in this demo 
selected scene. Again, I can move this character if I press Q, I can select another character and this is done using script, specifically this camera rig script right here. And now something that I'm really excited to. Well, when you create a game, you often want to write some custom procedures. You often want to write some code to help you create the scenery, the game itself, the properties and so on. And that is basically what a tool looks like, what a tool is meant to be. A tool in the editor that helps you to create your game. And right now in the Cave Engine, you can create your own custom tools using Python. So I have here in this project, just a simple tool test here. It's a script, I can double click it to review in the text editor and you can see that I have a class. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. And let me maximize this window to be really honest. Uh, I have a class here that is my tool and it implements the UI.debug tab. And this cave UI is a new module that I added to the Python scripting so you can create your own tools. And this have a basic constructor in Python, nothing new here. And I do have uh, two variables that I'm constructing. And something that is new here is that I do have a draw method. In this draw method, I can basically define, specify how I want the UI of my tool to look like. Let me show you the example of this. So let me undo this maximization. Let me open the text editor again. And if I go to the editor tools, register tab, I can see my, my tool here, literally. And if I click on it, you can see that I have a new window. And this window I can dock into my project just like any other window. So I just dock it this here, I can dock it here. And this is literally a tool that I just wrote here using Python. So I have a UI text. This is a text. Uh, there's a typo here. Oops. Here we go. <laughs> and you can see that the text is here. I have a node just like you can expect right here with an OK and it does, it does support like if you forgot to close a node, for example, it is not going to crash everything. Of course, I need to do this. Let me run this, this tool again. Now my node looks correct. I have an OK here and I can have headers with a bunch of stuff. For example, I have a positions header that are going to iterate over all my positions. That is a list. It's empty by default and you're going to display the positions. If I click in the add position and again, this is a button that I added here in the tooling. You can see that I have a new position right here. I can adjust the settings, can add another one, another one, another one. And this is a tool that I just wrote. Of course, uh, in, it does nothing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just to explain to you how everything works. I have another header right here with another vector and a click me button that you're going to print working in the console. So this is tooling support. And of course you can um, use this to interact with the game engine itself, just using the cave module as you would use it in a regular script. So you can access the scenes, you can access the entities, the components and everything from this tooling interface, which is amazing. In the future, I plan to expand this even more to allow user-made tools being shared everywhere and very easy to set up and use in the game engine. Oh, and when you close the editor, you're going to have a new message here, a new pop-up message. So I'm going to click in close here in the top of the window. Let me minimize it a little bit so you can see. I'm going to click in close and have this quit editor message that is going to allow you to cancel your action. You can go ahead again and save and kit and don't, just don't save the project and kit right, uh, straight forward. Let me save and kit this and open a new one. And this time I'm going to open this Ponza demo. All right, this is a classic scene using all over the place for benchmarking and so on. So this is the Ponza. It's a GLTF model that I just imported to the scene and you can see here that everything got imported correctly. The assets, the textures, the materials and so on. Very easy to go and you can adjust here the settings in your project. And what is new here, the last thing, is that I did a bunch of small improvements in the usability and the editor UI as well. So starting in, this, in the settings, it's no longer a huge mess. You can see here that I have uh, tabs inside this main tab here to define my handling, the debugging, that is just 
some random stuff at the moment, but I can have everything right here and the game itself. And I do have a new export your game tab that I can select a startup scene and export this as a runtime for Windows 64 bits at the moment. And I can test the game as a runtime. Let me add a camera here to test the game. So I have here a camera. Let me rotate the camera. Let me go ahead here and click here to enable the camera component view so I can see what is going on. Can disable this. Oh, and by the way, if I have this enabled and try to move the mouse around, you, you're not going to be able to see. Oh, I think you will. I have a message here saying that I cannot move the mouse around because I have the camera selected. So I have this and if I save and save and run as a standalone player, you can see that it's going to work just fine as a new window, a new process. Of course, there's no logic in here. Um, I should have done this in the previous project, but anyways, you can see that we're going to work just fine as a runtime project. And of course, I can export this to Windows so other players will be able to play your game without needing the editor and so on. I also improved the entity properties tab. So you can see here that I have also tabs that we're going to divide the components. So I have here the basic components. I have the settings of the entity. That is if the entity is active or not, if I have a template entity or not. So I can disable the light. You can see that I no longer have lights here. I can enable it again. And I have the tags. Uh, I changed a little bit the tags, how the tags works. So let me create a new tag here. You can see that I have a list of the current tags. It's just the name and a delete button. So let me add another, another tag and I'm going to create and you can see that the tag is created here. Uh, in the future, this is going to evolve to a property system. So you can select, you can add like a health tag and select a type for this tag, like an integer or a float, and you can do all sorts of advanced stuff with that. But for now, the tag is only an indication. And that's not everything. I have a huge amount of new stuff that I added to this version. So I'm going to link the release notes for the 0.96 and the 0.96b. Uh, that is just a new version that I added based on feedback that I received on my Discord server. And by the way, I'm also going to leave the link for my Discord server right here because the community that is building around this is truly breathtaking. Thank you a lot if you are one of the people that is actively uh, interacting, contributing, suggesting stuff. I'm implementing a bunch of new stuff and I even did this uh, new release today that we're gonna fix a bunch of stuff, implement a bunch of feedback that I received from the community. So that's amazing. I have a bunch of bug fixes, so the game engine is very, very, very stable right now. And remember that tomorrow I'm gonna be hosting a game jam and hopefully I will be able to create a cool game using my own game engine. That's gonna be truly breathtaking. So that's it for this video. My name is Guilherme. Thank you a lot for watching and I see you in the next time.